Hello and welcome everyone to this special Hour of Code webinar brought to you by Partners in Research Canada. My name is Stacey Joyce and I will be your host. Remember that you can ask questions throughout the webinar, not just at the end. Make sure you find the chat function in the top left-hand corner of your Zoom window and you can include your name, your school, and or your city and we'll give you a shout out when we ask your question. If you're on Twitter, don't be shy about sharing a picture of your participation today. We would love to see it. Uh, some common hashtags that are going around this week are Hour of Code, Canada Learning Code, or Ontario Codes, if you're in Ontario. And you can also give us a mention if, um, if you have room in that tweet. And we're at Partners in Res. And today's guest is Dr. Jeff Orchard. He is an Associate Professor of Computer science at the University of Waterloo. So I think that's quite enough for me. I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Orchard. Please take it away. Thank you and welcome everyone from across Canada. I'm really excited to share with you uh, what coding is and, uh, and um, I'll show you some examples of how to get started with coding. But before I do, I just want to talk to you a little bit about what coding is like for me. Um, I, I, you've probably played with Lego before or done crafts. And to me, coding is like doing those things because you're building something. You're, you know, when Lego, you're using the blocks that they have, or when you're doing crafts, you have popsicle sticks and tape and glue and all these different pieces. And when you're doing those things, you're building something. You have a picture in your mind of what you want to build. And you take the pieces and you add them on, and you build and build, and you see your structure or your, your creation come into, into, into its shape, and then you can have it there. For me, that's what coding is like. It's building something. You have an idea in your mind of what you want to build, and you build it. Except you don't use blocks or tape or popsicle sticks. You're using uh, building blocks on the computer. You're using lines of code. So it's, it's really the same sort of feeling for me. I love coding, and I think many, many of you will also really like coding. If you haven't done it before, this might be a life-changing uh, day for you. So I'm excited to show you about coding. Um, and the great thing about coding is it's fun, but it's also the sort of thing that you can do as a job. I do it as a job. I teach it at a university. But there are lots and lots of other jobs um, that use coding. You can pretty much think of any field and it has coding in it. Well, first of all, there's the obvious things like Google Docs and, and uh, the things you do in your classroom often. Uh, YouTube, that's all coding. These are all things that are made by people writing lines of code. Games, computer games. Um, stores and banks and doctor's offices and veterinary clinics and taxis, movies, they all use computers and people have to write the, the programs through coding. So, so there's a lot of opportunity to, to do things that you like to do. Um, I like to say that if, you, if you're interested in coding, you might have another interest as well. Maybe you're interested in movies. You can take your passion for movies and add coding to it and have a career doing coding in movies. Computer graphics is just one example of how coding is used in movies, but uh, computers and, and coding are used in all sorts of other places in movies. Storyboard creation and um, you know, communication and uh, doing the processing of the images of the movies themselves. Um, maybe you like cats and dogs and maybe you want to be a vet. Well, there you can also use computers in a veterinary clinic. Someone had to write the code that shows, um, you know, the, the cat's file to the vet and uh, moves that information around. Maybe you like um, building stuff out of wood. You could be a carpenter or something. Well, there are people who do coding specifically for carpentry and building buildings, like computers are used in all sorts of different fields. So take what you're really interested in and you can add coding to it and have a career out of it. So I'd like to introduce you to coding, if I may. Is now a good time to start into that, Stacey? Well, I think I might pause you since you asked for one question here from Ms. Uh, Ramirez grade five class at St. Elizabeth Seton in Burlington. They would like to know how long have you been teaching coding? Um, I've been a professor since 2003, so 13 years. Um, so that's how long I've been at Waterloo. I did a bit of teaching during my PhD, so about 15 years, I guess. And I suppose a follow-up question, um, have you seen a lot of changes in those 13 years or so? Yes. Uh, the stuff I'm going to show today 
the scratch and, and the Blockly type of coding that you'll see um, did not exist, as far as I know, did not exist even five or six years ago. So things are really changing. Uh, coding is becoming a lot more accessible. When I was young, if you wanted to write a program, it was all basically just words on a screen. But now, um, things are far more advanced. You can actually drag and drop and do graphics and have different characters running around and animating a lot more accessible. You can do a lot more really interesting stuff. You can make games out of uh, coding. Everyone, people have written most of the framework and you just build on top of that. So it's, a, it's changed a lot. Awesome. Um, let's see. Well, um, I just have to widen this so I can see the name here. Um, Ms. Knight's class would like to know, why did you start coding? Well, my dad brought home a computer a long, 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 long time ago, and uh, I just picked it up and went through some of the basic uh, tutorials, and it really just is intrinsically fun. You can produce things um, surprising without much uh, effort. Um, I see there's a question here from uh, Wendy Ramirez uh, asking, if, is it easy? And I would say it's, it's easy to get started, but it can be as complicated and as difficult as you want it to be. It takes practice, but, um, but just like anything, you get better at it and better at it. And uh, no one's perfect at it, but there's a lot of uh, scope to get better and better. I think um, I just want to ask one more question here, and then I think we should dive in. Um, Ms. Villadson's class, uh, they are grade fives and sixes in Bray at Brayside Elementary. They would like to know how it would work in a movie. You mentioned coding in a movie. How, how would that work? <clears throat> well, one thing is computer graphics. I mean, uh, Frozen and Moana, these are all made on computers, all on computers. Um, people don't draw them anymore. Uh, artists draw them on a computer screen, and there are lots of um, lots of people, even researchers, work on uh, computer programs to make it look more and more real, more and more interesting, to make the motion more fluid and realistic. These are all uh, computer algorithms. Uh, so that's one example: computer graphics, Star Wars. Tons of computer graphics in there. It looks real, but it's a lot of it's computer graphics. And the challenge is to write the program to make it look real, but it's actually drawing on a computer. Um, that's just one example. There are computers used behind the scenes as well, um, but uh, I don't know as much about them. Great. Well, thank you for elaborating. I think we should dive right in. Rest assured to the classes who have submitted some questions I haven't gotten to yet. I will just kind of put those aside in a, in a list and we'll pause for questions after looking at our, uh, our Moana tutorial a little bit. Okay. I see lots of great questions. I, I, I'm glad to see that enthusiasm, but I really want to show you coding. So let me start with that. I'm going to share my uh, browser window. So I hope you're now seeing Moana, Hour of Code. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to dive into this. I'm going to go through this. I'll skip a few of the, of the exercises here and there. Um, by the way, the sound comes on sometimes, and I'll just mute it when I hear the sound come on. It can probably come on at the beginning here. Eventually. <laughs> okay. I can, I can tell you what's going on here. I'm going to skip all the little texts and stuff like that and just tell you what's going on. In fact, I'm going to skip right to number two here. Number one's really, really easy. Two is pretty easy, but so we can start there. Um, so what I'm going to do, you're going to see three panels here. Here, this thing on the left, you can see where the boat is, Moana in the boat with uh, Maui, I believe his name is. Um, that's the stage. So that's where we're going to see uh, how things progress as, uh, as our program runs. This thing here with entitled blocks, this kind of darker green thing, this is our toolbox. These are the different blocks that we can use to put together and, and build up our program. And this final piece here, the workspace, this is where we're going to build the, the program. So let me, for example, what we want to do here is get Moana's boat to move forward one, two, three spaces to get on the swirl. So what I would do is I'll, I'll click run, and run means to go ahead and do the program to, to start it. So when I click that, the program's gonna start on this purple when run block. And it's gonna start there and then start doing the stuff underneath it, each one in sequence. So for example, I'm gonna click, I'm gonna pull this move forward down and it snaps into place. 
So it's, she's going to, they're going to move forward one, but I want them to move forward two, three spaces to get to the swirl. So here I go, click run. One, two, three spaces. There, we did it. We just wrote a simple program with four lines of code. So I'm going to go through um, a whole bunch of these and they get more and more complicated. We're going to add on different parts and different pieces that make the, uh, the programs that you can write more rich and more interesting. So here we want to move forward, turn right, and then move forward, forward. And then when we get to the end, we want to do fishing. So there's already a move forward there. We want to turn right. See how we do them in sequence? After we turn right, we want to move forward two more times. And when we get to the end, we want to do fishing. Catch those fish that are jumping around. So run forward, turn right, forward, forward, and then fish. See how I put all those things in order and it does them from top to bottom. Now we're on to number, what is this, four? Right. Okay. So now it starts to get interesting. See, how, there are two places I want to catch fish. And if I think to myself from where I am, I need to go forward, forward, fish, turn right. Forward, forward, fish. Okay, so let me pull those in place. Forward, forward, fish, turn right, forward, forward, fish, go. Forward, forward, fish, turn right, forward, forward, fish, <clears throat> it works. Maybe next time I'll, I'll mess it up so you can see what happens when I do it wrong. Okay, on to number five. You might start to notice that there's a lot of repetition. Keep, keep, keep an eye out for repetition because we're going to uh, use that to our advantage later on. Here's kind of a repetition. I'm thinking ahead, forward, 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 fish, turn right. Forward, 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 fish, turn right. Forward, 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 fish. There's a lot of repetition there, right? Forward, forward, whoops, I missed. Forward, let me mess this one up. Let's say I did forward, forward, fish, not far enough. Turn right. This happens all the time when you're writing a program. You try something, it's not quite right, and then it doesn't work. Oops, that's okay. That's called debugging. You go back and you see what you did wrong. This gives you, this gives you hints to what you did wrong. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to skip this one and go on to number six. Okay. The video. You can watch the video later. But now this introduces a really interesting uh, part of programming called a loop. Now you see this this new piece we have in our toolbox. This sort of purple bracket. It says repeat four times. This is a really common uh, structure in in programming and coding. Whatever is inside it, those pieces will be they'll go through it four times. Or if I chose five times or three times or however many times I choose, I'll leave it at four. So in looking at, to get the boat to the swirl, I have to go forward, 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 forward. That's four forwards. So instead of having dragging move forward over four times by itself, I could instead have that loop and have move forward just once inside. And it'll go through it four times. One, two, three, four. And it works. If I had said only three times, it wouldn't have made it all the way. I'm going to skip seven as well. I think I'm going to go straight to eight. So now you're starting to see the pieces come together for how we build a program. Okay, now we need to avoid the rocks. So we're zigzagging around a bit because there are rocks in the water. So I'm seeing here we need to go forward uh, one, two, three times, turn, and forward two more times and turn, and one, two, three, four times. So I'm going to use three different loops. The first loop, I, you can see it's already there, move forward three times. If I run that, forward, 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 it puts me there. Okay, and it's telling me, oh, I didn't quite do it, so I'm going to 
build it up more. I know that after I'm done that, I need to turn right. Then I need to go forward two more times. So I'm going to drag another loop over here, which I'll go through that loop two times so I can move forward twice. After that, I'll be here and I need to turn left. So after it goes through the two things, it continues. After it goes through the loop two times, it'll, it drops down underneath that big frame and starts to do the stuff underneath it. So turn left and then I can go forward three more times. Sorry, four more times. I mean. So this first loop will take me forward three times. One, two, three, it finishes that, turns right. Now the next loop takes me forward two times, finishes that, turns left. The last loop takes me forward four times. Okay. On to number nine. By the way, the first time when I was in grade 10 is when, when I first learned programming, I didn't understand it at all. <laughs> I don't know why. For some reason, my brain uh, just didn't get it the first time I saw it. But after seeing it again, I thought, wow, this is really cool. Okay, now listen to this repetition. I'm going to sort of speak my way through this zigzag pattern. Forward, left, forward, right. Forward, left, forward, right. Forward, left, forward, right. And so on. There's a lot of repetition there. So I'm going to put that repetition inside this loop. Forward, left, forward, Right. Each of the forward, left, forward, right does one zigzag. And I need to do, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six zigzags. So I've got a loop that goes through six times. Inside that bracket, I've got what I need to do one zigzag forward, left, forward, right. Let's run it. Forward, left, forward, right. There's one zigzag. And now it goes through and does it six times. It can take time. There's some really fun uh, hour of code things there. There's, uh, there's a frozen one and there's um, Minecraft. Okay, we did it. So we went through that loop six times. On to 10. So I think this is an, another loop one. Okay, so I'm gonna to put together some parts. Uh, let's see, what does it want? Use two different repeats, okay. So the first re for the first repeat block, I wanna use that just to move forward. One, two, three, four. So move forward four times, yes, perfect. After that, I want to do one, two, three zigzags. And the zigzag, in this zigzag, I need to turn right, forward, turn left, forward. Just building up the program block by block. One, two, three, four. That's the first repeat block. Now it's zigzag. One. There's one zigzag. There's a second one. By the way, I'm, I've been coding for a long time, as, as I told you before. So, so I'm, I'm pretty good at this. Um, don't be surprised or don't be um, disappointed if it takes a, a number of different tries for you. That's perfectly normal. In fact, this particular um, Moana thing, I've done many times just practicing, so I'm really good at this one now. Okay, now we get to make a choice. We can choose a character, either Maui or Moana. I'll choose Moana just because she's the, the heroine of, of the story. So now she, now that they've taken their boat, they're on the, uh, I guess, the big boat, then these little Kakamora things are trying to stop Moana from reaching her goal. I haven't seen the movie, so I don't know what her goal is really, but uh, um, so she has some new challenges. Now she has to move forward 
then she has to um, knock over the Kakamura. And you can see we've got some new tools in our toolbox. We have a dodge and a strike. The dodge is what she does when they throw something at her. She moves out of the way. And they'll throw something at her when she gets right up next to them. So she needs to dodge right away. And then she strikes, hits them with her paddle and knocks them over. So let's, let me just do this first part here. I'm not gonna use a loop for this one. Forward, forward, and then strike. And watch what happens. Forward, forward. She's getting ready to strike, but oh, she got hit. So we need to dodge first. Dodge. Dodge is a word that means to duck out of the way. Okay, so it's telling me, it's trying to give me help. So what I'm going to do is, um, I can see here there's a, a repeating pattern. Forward, forward, dodge, strike. And I turn, forward, forward, dodge, strike. It's the same thing twice in a row. So I'm going to use this repeat two times block. And inside, forward, forward, I need to put a dodge in there before I strike. And then turn right at the end of it so that I'm facing the right direction. Okay, so it's going to do the same thing twice in a row. Let's see it go. Forward, forward, dodge, whoa. And then strike, got that Kakamura. Okay, turn right. That was the first loop through. Now she's going through the second time doing the same actions again, dodge and strike. And then there's a piece at the end where she turns, that doesn't really matter. All right, we did it. On to, what was that? Mm -hmm. We're going on to 12. Can we pause here for a few yeah. questions maybe? I think our, our students have been waiting very patiently. Okay. Um, so let's see, why don't we start with a question um, from Alex at Credit View Public School in Ontario. Alex wants to know, what is the difference between game coding and programming? Okay, so part of what makes a game fun really is the game design. So you have to have an interesting idea, something that's challenging and fun. So there's a certain, um, a certain skill to designing fun games. But once you have a design of a game, I mean, there are lots of fun games like chess and uh, tic-tac-toe uh, tic and uh, like lots of games that don't require computers. So games, the design of a game is one thing. To put that game on a computer requires coding. As soon as you want to put something on the computer, you need to tell the computer what to do. And that's what coding is. Of course, in computer games that have lots of graphics, there's lots of rich rich, really interesting programming to do to make it look fun, to make sure the, the computer reacts quickly. There's a lot of stuff happening really quickly. So that it's a challenging type of programming to, make, to write programs that are efficient so that they run quickly enough. Um, some games send stuff over the internet. And uh, so you need to know how to send information efficiently over the internet so that you can um, but players can play against each other, for example, like Agario. Awesome. And uh, a bit of a follow-up question. When professionally uh, coding, I just lost it. there we go. When professionally coding, could something bad happen or could the consequences be dire? That's another question from Credit View. Oh, good question. Um, uh, just like anything, bad things can happen. Um, so it's really important that when people write uh, code, when people write computer programs, that it works the way they want it to. This is especially true in like airplanes and cars where people's lives are at stake. So, uh, I mean, the self-driving cars is something that seems to be coming. Um, you know, maybe in our generation, people will be in self-driving cars. Obviously, you want the self-driving car to work properly. Uh, people are working really hard on that. And in fact, self-driving cars seem to be better drivers than most people. So that's some good news. But indeed, it's really important to make sure your program does what you want it to do. Of course, some people could, someone could write a program that does what they want it to do, and it does something bad. Some people write viruses for the internet, uh, write little programs that copy themselves and, and cause trouble. Um, but that's just like anything. You have to deal with things like that in anything that you do. 
And uh, a sort of related question, actually, from one of our teachers, uh, Mrs. Tib Shirani wanted to know, how do you publish code? How do you publish code? There are a number of different ways, <clears throat> like Apple and Microsoft, they publish their code by, by um, offering it on their web pages. But if you're <clears throat> not working for one of those companies, you can publish code through um, a number of different web services. I, I'm not actually really familiar with them. Um, but there's things like SourceForge and GitHub. Um, in fact, you can publish your code on Scratch, which I'll show you a bit later. It's the same sort of programming environment I'm using for Moana. But you can make your code available for other people to look at and try. Awesome. Well, I think I might uh, wrap up my little intermission here and let you keep showing us what you were showing us with Moana. Okay. Back to... One. <clears throat> okay, so here again, we have a repeated pattern. You see uh, that she needs to move forward, forward, dodge, strike, turn. Forward, forward, dodge, strike, turn. Forward, forward, dodge, strike, turn. So we can, it's the same thing three times in a row. So let's put those things in. Forward, forward, dodge, strike, turn left in this case. So even though she has to do all this stuff, it doesn't take a whole lot of blocks to write that bit of code to make her to do it all. Forward, forward, then dodge, then strike, and then turn. That was one, uh, one time through the loop. Now it's the second time. Dodge, strike, and then turn. Forward, forward, dodge, strike, turn. So repeating, a lot of programming is, is finding these repeating patterns and using them to your advantage. You don't have to write it every time. You write it once, but use it multiple times. So soon they're going to introduce some other interesting loops. I think this is the one here. Okay, now here's a different kind of loop. Before our loop was do it this many times, do it four times, do it three times. This is, this is a different one. This says repeat until something. And this one says repeat until we reach the Kakamura. So I don't know how many times it'll repeat. I, I can look at the thing here, one, two, three, four, five, but maybe it's six, maybe it's two, I don't know, ahead of time. So I can instead have this loop that says repeat until we reach the Kakamura. If what I want to do is, um, Keep moving forward until we reach the Kakamaru. Once we do, then we dodge and strike. See, look how short that program is. Forward, 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 keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Oh, we've reached the Kakamaru. Now it starts doing this stuff after loop. Dodge and strike. All right. By the way, I've, I've got my smartphone here. It's another great example of uh, programming. In these next few lessons. All those uh, old smartphones and iPods and iPads and all those things are, are just, it's code, it's all code. Okay, here's a new thing. We have a new block now in our, in our toolbox here, if. So this is, this is called a conditional. It says that um, if, if a starfish is coming towards us, the Kakamaru is going to sh uh, sh throw starfish at us. If there's a starfish coming, we should dodge. We don't know when that's going to happen, but if it does, we'll dodge. So most of the program is already here. Repeat until we reach the rope. We're going to move forward, and if a starfish is coming, dodge. And once we reach the rope, we need to strike to cut the rope. Okay, so this if statement is a new one, so let's watch. We're moving forward until we reach the rope, move forward, move forward. Oh, a starfish came, so she stopped and she dodged. That if helped us, it helped Moana not get hit by the starfish. She did again. Okay, so we have a new tool in our toolbox, an if statement. So let's use that again. So again, we need to avoid the starfish. And again, notice the pattern here. Move forward until we reach the rope, then we strike to cut the rope, then turn. And we need to do two of those 
move forward to cut the rope, and then move forward to cut the rope. So there are two of those. That's why we have this loop here, repeat two times. Inside that, we have a thing, move forward until you reach the rope. But as you're moving, you need to, uh, if a starfish is coming, you need to dodge. Okay, so move forward, and once you reach the rope, this block's done, and you come down here to strike. Now, at that point, we'll be here, so we need to turn right, which is down here a little bit, and then do the whole thing over again for the next leg of the journey along here. Forward, forward, oh, dodge, because a starfish was coming. Good thing we had that if statement there, that if block, strike, good. Now we turn, that's one loop through that, repeat two times. Forward, if the starfish comes, dodge. Forward, forward, once we're, oh, dodge again. Once we're at the rope, strike. So you see how we're taking these little pieces, these blocks, and putting them together in different ways. And that's what programs are. It's, it's, um, it's, not a, it's a small number of tasks, just like there are a small number of different Lego blocks, but you can put them together in an infinity of different ways to make an infinity of different toys. Okay, here are three, so it gets a little bit repetitive here. Maybe I'll skip this one. Let's go on to 17. This would be the same thing, but do the same thing three times in a row. Uh, maybe I will do this one, okay. Repeat three times. And each of those three times will be walking along, dodging, and then cut the rope. So to walk along and cut the rope, I need to, inside, say, repeat until I reach the rope. What do I repeat? I repeat moving forward and then dodging if a starfish comes. Once that's done, that means I'm at the rope, so then I can strike to cut the rope. See how I put that after my repeat until I reach the rope one. And then I turn left. What was my turn left? Oh, it's right there. Okay, forward, forward, forward. If the starfish comes, then dodge. There's one. I think I dodged it. Now I'm at the rope, strike, and turn. That was one time through the repeat three times loop. Okay, lots of dodging there. So these, these loops, these repeat and repeat until and these if things, these are the same tools that programmers use to program your iPod and to program Google Docs. It's the same tools. So do you want to continue with the next step or shall we take a pause here for some questions? We can take a pause. Sure. So um, we've been looking now at uh, the different lines of coding that you're using, it, um, a tool with blocks instead of writing lines. We already mentioned that. But uh, you've also shown that there are some different blocks that you can use, and I presume some analogous lines of code, if you were typing them out, Absolutely. that uh, you can use to reduce how many times you have to tell the program to do what you want it to do. If there are repeats or conditional things, if something happens, you want uh, the, the code to do something in response. A typical program, it, if it was quite simple, how many lines of code are we talking? Ms. Ramirez's class would like to know. Okay, it really depends on many factors. Um, it depends on what language you're programming in, for example. There are lots of different programming languages. These languages are much easier to learn than a speak, spoken language, like Russian or German or Chinese or something. So it's, once you learn uh, how to program, the languages are really just slight variations on the same sort of thing. But different languages will have different toolboxes at your disposal. So depending on what you want to do and what language you're using, it'll vary quite a bit. I'll show you an example in Scratch uh, where I, I made a pretty interesting, I think it's kind of a fun game, out of not very many lines of code. Um, we have till 145, right? Another 10 minutes or so. About that, yeah. Well, I think most of the rest of Moana is kind of the same thing. In fact, there's only one more stage. Um, and I think it's pretty much the same thing that we've already seen. So maybe I can move to show you my game in Scratch. Sure. And while you're loading that, um, Mr. McCleary's class sort of had a related question there. 
Um, do you have to know uh, a language like Fortran or some others to do that coding? Yes, you need to, just like if you want to tell someone a story or give someone instructions, you need to be able to speak their language. If you want to write a computer program, write some code, you need to know the language. You don't need to know, you don't need to know everything about the language, but you need to know some parts of the language. And the more you know about the language, the more you can, the more you can do with it. Um, so let me show you um, a language called Scratch. It's, you'll notice it's very similar to what you were looking at uh, before with Moana. Now this is a much fuller language and you, I think you all have access to it. It's freely available on the web. I created an, an account, I'm Jay Orchard. And uh, this game, which I call Speedy Beetle, is one that you can try out for yourself. The code you're seeing right here, it's basically three pieces and, and a lot of pieces are similar. There are some extra, um, there's a quite a, a, a much bigger toolbox here. You can have events, sensing, like if it touches a different color, you can, have different, you can make sounds, you can change the look of your, of your character. Um, let's see, where are the loops? Uh, control. So here's a repeat 10 times loop. Here's a repeat until loop. So you've already seen those, but you can see that there are other options. So I don't expect you to understand all of this code. This took me uh, probably a couple hours to put together. Um, but I'll show you what it does at least. So let me make it full screen here. Now when I press the space bar, it puts the beetle at the starting line and it starts it moving. And it has to crawl through this, um, this maze following the arrows. And if I touch, it's basically timing it. So the faster, the better. And if I hit the up arrow, it moves a bit faster. And if I touch the black, it's going to subtract time from me. So it counted how many times I touched the black. It runs a lot faster when I'm not uh, screencasting. <laughs> so you can try it yourself. Um, it usually doesn't take quite so long. But this was this game I made out of a small bit of code of what I just showed you on the other page there. So it took me 46 seconds. My record is like 12 or something. See if you can beat my record. Um, so it's not a huge, um, I mean, I, maybe I used about 30 blocks there or something, or 20, 30 blocks. But of course, this has a lot of stuff underneath. It all, the language already knows how to draw the beetle and move the beetle. It knows how to listen to your, your mouse cursor and knows how to listen to the keyboard. So these sorts of language, this is what's different about languages now compared to when I was young. Um, there's a lot more stuff already done for you. And you can get straight to the interesting stuff, like making your own game. So I have a, a couple questions that relate to that. Um, Ms. Verge's class would like to know where those instruction buttons come from and how can they create their own, their grade two class. The toolbox here, is that what they're asking about? I am guessing so, but if we, if we are wrong, I invite her to okay. clarify in the chat. So this, this toolbox, I mean, it depends on the person who's creating the language can make those decisions. So. So maybe someday you'll write your own language. Maybe you'll think that a slightly different arrangements of tool, different arrangement of tools is better. Um, but the person who designed uh, Scratch, um, they decided that this was a good set for making games. And um, I believe you can make more. There's this more blocks thing here. I don't have a lot of experience with that, but um, you can make your own blocks. Um, I, won't, I won't try to learn it right here and now. <laughs> But um, yeah, I think, I think you can make your own blocks by adding other blocks together, I'm not sure. And, um, and so what about those characters? You said it, it already knows um, how, how the beetle looks, et cetera. Um, we had a question come in quite a while ago about, uh, about those ready-made objects. Where do, where do they come from or how are they coded? These are called sprites or, or sometimes agents. So basically all this code you're seeing here on the screen, this workspace, these are all the programs that control the beetle and, and uh, that are re they relate to what the beetle does. Now I can add a new one if I want. Let's, I go down to Sprite, new Sprite. Um, I guess I click on that and I can choose from all these things here. Um, fantasy, 
Let me just choose one. How about uh, uh, Gobo? I double clicked on it. So now I have a Gobo here. And I can start writing a program for Gobo. And um, for example, I can make Gobo chase the beetle. Um, events like when the space bar is clicked. Um, let's see, motion. It might take me too. It might take me too long to uh, to make that work right away. But it wouldn't. It would take me about maybe five minutes to drag in the blocks so that it chases the beetle. Awesome. Um, we touched a little bit on these different programming languages. Um, River in Ms. Heenan's class wanted to know if there are different types of coding. So yes, we talked about languages. What about how those languages are applied? I think once you learn how to code, most languages are more or less the same. There are different types of coding. Um, there's object-oriented programming, which, which this is, where you sort of, you write a program that controls an agent or a sprite. Um, and it reacts to events like when a button's pressed or when it touches black. There are other types of coding where it's just like a recipe. You start at the top and you go down the list and, and do what it says. You can add numbers and divide and you can draw things and stuff. Um, then there's same, something called functional programming, which is kind of, they're just different ways of thinking about uh, problems and solutions. But they're mostly, um, they're mostly similar. They're, they're more, the same, then there are different. And what do you think is the most popular type of coding Ms. Cooper's class would like to know? Um, Object-oriented programming, I would say, is the most popular. So things like, um, things, I think most professional uh, software, like, um, I'm just guessing, like, like Facebook and Instagram and Google Apps and Microsoft uh, Word and all those things are probably programmed in an object-oriented language. Okay, and Ms. McGee's class would like to know um, how do games know how to do the moves that people put through in controllers? So perhaps more like a, a Nintendo or an Xbox. Uh, do all possible move combinations have to be embedded in the code? No, it's really just, uh, it's decisions. The code has to make decisions. Um, and when the person, this is one of the challenges of writing code, you don't know ahead of time what circumstances the code is going to encounter. So, so you don't know if the person is going to go right and then left and then left and then right or, or what. What you write is if they go left, we do this. If they go right, then do that. And you already saw those if blocks, right? So you can imagine if they go left, do these blocks. If they go right, do these blocks. And so you, you program in the logic of what will happen if this happens. Um, and there's lots of loops in there, lots of if statements. So I, I suppose in that case, you have to think of all the possible outcomes that, uh, that could come to pass. What happens if you write a program and there is a possibility to go straight instead of turning left or right and the user decides to do that and you haven't written code for that? What would happen? That's right. You, you have to know you have to know what all the options are at every point. And then that's not usually too difficult to know. Um, like those little programs that I was writing, there's only a small set of things that can happen. And you just have to tell, you have to write the program, you have to write the code for what happens for each of those things that can happen. Okay. And we work together. And it's quite surprising how complicated and how interesting things can get with just a fairly small program. Well, talking about complicated, our, uh, our vehicles have become a lot more complicated in recent years, a lot more electronics and uh, computer-assisted technology. So Ms. Veladson's class would like to know, do vehicles use code at all? Um, that's the grade fives and sixes at Brayside Elementary. Yes, they use lots of code. Um, a lot of the... Um, the first cars that were built, of course, computers didn't exist then, so they didn't use computers. They didn't use electronic computers anyway. Um, but since computers are so good at processing information and they're so fast, we found that, um, that they're really good at controlling different parts of the car, how much gas flows, 
Um, a good example is um, cruise control. When you're driving, you can press on the gas and the brake to adjust the speed, but that's a simple thing you can ask the, the car to do. There's a very simple program that can push on the gas and the brake for you to maintain a constant speed. But that's even quite simple. Now there are far, far more complex computer systems in a car, not to mention like entertainment systems and radios and Bluetooth. You know, I hook up my, my smartphone to the stereo using Bluetooth and there's GPS navigational systems, lots and lots of uh, coding in the car. Great. Um, shifting gears a bit, haha, for the pun. Uh, do you have to go to college or university to get a job in coding? Um, you don't really have to, but it will certainly make it easier to get a job. Um, I think there are, there are types of coding that you would learn in college, and there are types of coding that you learn in, in, in like a computer science degree like I work in here at the university. Um, but those are both places you can get um, education for learning how to code. I would suggest if you enjoy coding that getting a, a degree or a college diploma is uh, a good way to go about getting a job. Great. Well, I, I'm lining up a couple last questions here. We're already a bit over time. The questions are still coming, um, but uh, we'll go for a few more and then we'll wrap it up here. Um, we have a couple questions about sort of the origins of coding. So uh, to Mary and Ms. Heenan's class, I wanted to know when did coding start? And at Amherst Island Public School, they are wondering what was the very first type of coding? Well, I think the first, um, the first computer language was invented by a woman, Grace Hopper. Um, I'm not sure when, I think it was around the Second World War time, maybe a bit before that. Um, uh, females have had quite a, a large impact in, they don't usually get enough credit, a lot, a, quite a large impact in coding over the years in computer science. Um, but computers, the, as, as machines became more available around the 50s and then 60s, they were like big machines in a big room. Um, nowadays, they're like really small, like this. And so, so coding can be used in more places now. Um, but usually, I'd say it became more widespread in the 70s and maybe 80s is when people had compute, started to have computers in their homes that they could program. Excellent. Well, I want to get one more question in there to, to wrap things up today. Uh, Mr. McCleary's class in Ontario would like to know, what is a good next step for them if they're interested in coding? How do they take this hour of code and translate that into further action? My advice would be to play with Scratch. Um, I have kids who are grade three, four, five, that, in that range, three to seven, grade three to seven, and they love Scratch. So I would say um, if your parents let you get a, an account on Scratch, or you don't, you don't need an account, but if you want to save your game, you do need an account, go to Scratch and, and start playing with it or go through the other hour of code um, uh, tutorials and lessons and learn from those. There are some that are based on Scratch. So that would, that's a great place to start. And from there, um, you can start to see, you can start to get internalize the logic of how coding works. And from there, other languages are really just more of the same kind of thinking. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for teaching us so much today, Dr. Orchard. Uh, we talked about Moana and coding. We went through Scratch. We went through career uh, applications and, and lots of other questions. Thank you so much for your time. It was my pleasure. I see so many great questions. It's such a shame we couldn't reach them all, but I hope everyone got something out of this. I'm sure they did. I certainly did. So uh, thank you again, and just to let everyone know, thank you for joining. And later this week, we are offering uh, coding webinars with Unity and with an Angry Birds tutorial. Uh, then next week, we are learning about careers in medicine. So more information on all of our upcoming webinars is available at pirweb.org. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day.